Hey guys, what's going on? This is Anthony bringing you a, another LNT or Learn and Teach where I reflect on my week and I tell you about something I learned this week and teach you something in return. So this week I'm pretty excited to tell you about what I learned because I have um, started trying to get into more habit, better habits lately. And uh, mainly because I set these life goals, well really yearly and quarterly goals for myself to do a couple or a few different things on a daily basis. One of which was to drink more water. In term, in actuality, I meant to drink a gallon of water a day. Um, another thing was to meditate 20 minutes a day. And then the last was to do three Duolingo lessons on Japanese because I want to learn Japanese. So, and I was having trouble tracking these, you know, day by day to make sure that I had them all done. And I found this cool app, or at least someone recommended it to me, called Streaks, which... I mean, it's a, it's a free app and you just put in the task that you want and you can put in a reminder for it and you just tap it and it tracks that you've done it on a daily basis, right? And it'll track how many days you've done it total. I think it's a really cool way to constantly keep in, engaged with, uh, with forming these habits, these good habits that you want to do. And I think it's a really awesome tool to get you in the habit of, you know, tracking how many days you're actually doing something and reminding yourself, with, you know, because we all get busy. <clears throat> reminding yourself to be able to you know actually do the task that you want to do in that habit that you're trying to form so streaks is what it's called with an s at the end and i think you find a lot of use of it if you're trying to build some some sort of habits now that's my learn for this week my teach is about steps to close a deal and i'm going to approach this from a syndication point of view and a multifamily syndication point of view and it's going to be very general um, because there's a lot more steps involved with this but First and foremost, you got to find the deal. And how do you find the deal? Well, for the most part, multifamily, you're going to find it through a broker. You may be able to find the, the deals off market, um, you know, going direct to seller. But most of the time, you're going to get a property come through a broker, commercial real estate broker. They're going to find you the deal. Right now, you got the deal in front of you. You underwrite it. One of the most important parts of, ha of you know, taking on a deal is being able to underwrite that deal. And that really means making sure that the purchase price matches what you think it should be given what the finances are and given where you think you can take the property, right? And that on that purchase price, really, most part, is probably not going to be the same price that the broker is, is putting out to people. So you underwrite the deal. You decide to submit an LOI or a letter of intent. That letter of intent is a non-legally binding document that says, hey, you know, I want these terms, this amount of due diligence, this amount of time to find lending, um, these contingencies, so on and so forth. And it is non-legally binding. You both sign it as kind of a, a pre-agreement um, before you actually sign the contract. Now, the contract is when, after you sign that, the EMD comes due and after certain, uh, the uh, earnest money deposit becomes due after a certain amount of time after that. You start getting into the due diligence period a certain amount, amount of time after that. And after the contract is signed, you kind of get into, let's call it three different three different parts. One is the lending part of it. And obviously, if you are buying this with cash, then this doesn't apply to you. But if you are getting a lender uh, or you know, using a bank or a private lender or um, you know, a multitude of other ways, hard money loan, multitude of other ways that you can buy this property, you have to go through lender some sort. So you have to go actually talk to that lender, get the terms of the agreement, figure out what the interest rate is going to be, amortization, all of that. And that takes a bit of a time and a bit of money. So what a, a better thing to do is to start uh, working on the tasks that don't require any money to do, like reviewing leases, uh, looking at contracts, um, you actually in-depth looking at the financials and the expenses, actually looking at the income that's coming in. Um, all of these different things you can do by just looking at the paperwork. And it'll save you a lot of time and money if you, can, if you still feel comfortable going through with the deal after looking at all that stuff after that then you can decide to put you know put the money down on in uh, terms of third-party reports to have the lender go take care of all that for you but it can be pricey so you should get all that done for him the second part is due diligence this is uh this is as most of you have already bought a house before is the time that you go inspect a property um it's the time when you were you do a lease audit it's the time that you Review contracts. This is your time to make sure that the property you're buying is the right property for you to buy. And then lastly, you have raising capital, which in terms of a syndication, you would be using other people's money to purchase a property. And that is a whole element in of itself. 
getting the financials together to present to the investors, make sure that it is a good deal for them as well. Getting them on board, doing webinars, all of that, raising capital. And then finally, you close on the property. And it's relatively a, a simple process. It's going to be the same process whether the property is 25 units or you know 500 units. But it is a very general process for how to close on the property. And this is really more geared towards a first-time investor who may not know how the process goes for a commercial real estate or multifamily. So I hope you've gotten a lot out of this. If you haven't checked out our podcast, the Lessons of Real Estate Show, we had a lot of great content over there. PCI teaches, give out a you know a, a weekly topic, you know, geared towards learning something about multifamily. I think you get a lot out of it. So you can find it on iTunes, on Spotify, all those great sites. And I will catch you guys next week for the LNT.